Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Happy Wednesday. If you're new around here, I hope you will consider hitting that subscribe button to join our crafty little family. So today we're going to be creating a scene card. I have the bad habit of reaching for the pre-printed images from collections. Not only is that faster and easier, but I know they will always coordinate well, but I do find a lot of joy in creating my own scenes. And so today I'm going to reach for some tried and true dyes that I have in my set to create this fun little winter scene in this cloche. And I hope that I inspire you to check out your dyes for your holiday cards as well. So stick with me and we'll make this together. I wanted to start out first by sharing with you the dyes that I've chosen to use for today's project. And I believe they have really earned their place in my stash and I go to them frequently. So I know that they were a good investment. So the first one I have here is the Lawn Fun Stitched Hillside Border. Obviously I'm using mine with the glittery paper today to make a snowy hillside, but you could easily use these with a green paper if you were gonna create a lawn, or you could use them simply to make a fun color block. Just choose different colors and cut those fun shapes and you'll get that stitched edge. So I use these often. I have this in the regular size and then I also have it slimline size because sometimes the scenes that I wanna make have a different orientation. So this one is perfect. So I also have the Concord and Ninth Home for the Holidays. This one looks a little bit worky. There are many little pieces, but they are pretty easy to put together and actually a lot of fun to create different combinations. Obviously today we're working with a holiday card, so I picked some colors that would go with that theme. I've used this set for a Halloween card and I made a spooky village. You could make a, a welcome to your new home card or um, just a variety of different ways to make these more customizable to the theme that you want. And so these are quite a few fun little pieces to mix and match. You all know how much I love my Spellbinders Cinching Go Poinsettia. I use those so often, not only for holidays, but just to create filler flowers or focus flowers for my regular cards. These are easy to create as well because you can just fold them on that score line rather than having to use your shaping tool. So these are perfect and they come in a variety of different sizes. So you'll be able to create a lot of different kinds of flower arrangements. Last but not least is the Elizabeth Craft Design Snow Globe. I see this as being more of a cloche because of the shape. So to me, that makes it more versatile. I can use this throughout different holidays or occasions, obviously Christmas. Uh, I have made these with a stack of pumpkins. I have made these with a, um, 4th of July theme with a bunting. So any kind of theme you could fit in here, the cloche is going to be a perfect uh, base to create a focal image. So those are the dies that I'm using. I think they're very versatile and I think they are a good investment and I go to them very often. So that's what I'm using today. So the card I'm making today is going to be six and a half by five. And I did already finish the inside with the coordinating pattern paper. This is just from my stash. I don't even have the full name of it. It's a Stamperia blue something, um, but it had a beautiful non-contrasting snowflake. So I thought that would be perfect to give a little bit of detail in the background, but not be so busy that it would be hard uh, to have a real focal image. Typically, I would be making a card with a flat base, and then my next layer would be on a dimensional foam tape. But because that cloche is so large, I do have to put everything on one layer. I cut my paper here. This is gray card stuck, six and three eighths high by four and seven eighths inch wide. My pattern paper, six and a quarter high by four and three quarter wide. And I took my little distressing tool and went around the edge just to give it some additional detail. Since we don't have as many layers, I thought it would get uh, 
a lot more detail around the edges and give it a little bit more texture. So I'm just adding that to my cardstock. And then here's where I decided to put my foam. So I'm still going to get that nice dimension, but it will just be on the base. This also helps to make it a little bit more sturdy. I'm gonna pull this closer to me so I can see over top of it to get it centered well. So I'm gonna have the border of the base, the white card stuck, along with that beautiful gray. So here is the base for this. And here is the inset section. It's still a snowflake, but it has a drastically different um, kind of palette there. It's much brighter and the contrast is a little bit more noticeable. I'm still using the same gray cardstock and the same distressing technique to give me that texture. This cardstock is five and three quarter by four and a quarter. The pattern paper is five and five eighths by four and eight. Next, I wanna add a fairly large die cut. This is a Spellbinders die as well. I don't have the name off the top of my head, um, but it is a good shape so that it's visible around the cloche. So now we have the base set up and I can build that cloche. What I wanna do is take the inset portion of that die and I wanna add my hillsides to it so that I can cut them to be exactly the width that I need to fit in the frame. So I just cut these with those hillside borders and I'm going to layer them on here, staggering them so that I get a better shape with the hillsides going in different directions. I have put the adhesive a little bit in from the bottom so that I can add the elements behind it where I need to layer. And then here's just this last one. So I'm gonna come back in and remove the excess. That way I know that it will fit perfectly inside the frame. So now what I wanna to do to make this easier to add to my card is remove some double-sided tape backing. I'm going to adhere this to a piece of heavy cardstock because that frame around there is a little bit hard to add if you don't have extra room on the side. So I'm just going to adhere this to that thick cardstock, and then I'll bring in the frame that goes around. This would be uh, the cloche. The sides of this are very narrow, and I did not have an eighth of an inch adhesive, so I just put my quarter of an inch tape on to wax paper and then cut it in half so that I could have this to be thin enough to fit behind. It would be really difficult to put this on with glue. I think it would make quite a mess and be hard to position it exactly where you want it. So I'm just going to put that border on. You can squish it a little bit before pressing down firmly, and that way you get the perfect placement. So now what I want to do is cut this out, and then I can add this as one single piece. It's easy to go around these edges because they're all outside corners, so just take your time and cut that carefully. This cloche or snow globe has a base layer to add. I cut mine from a wood grain. I also cut a piece of that heavy cardstock and added it as well so that I can attach this and not have to cut around those inside curves. That makes it much easier. I've also put a layer of dimensional foam tape here along the bottom and then I'll just attach this to the bottom of the cloche 
and then I'll add some additional foam tape to the top. So I just want to line that up, which way will be easier. You see that was much easier than having to cut in to those inside corners. So I've got some additional foam tape here and I'll just cut this right along the edge. I'll position this slightly higher just so that I can leave room for my flowers, which I will have to add now. That is out of sequence of what I would typically do, but I need to make sure to leave room on here where when I build the scene inside. So here's those cinch and go points. That is, I made some with blue and white. The one in the center has an additional layer just because it's my focal flower. I finished that off with loopy twine bows, some netting foliage here that's die cut, and then some beautiful blue chevron striped twill. That's from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And I want to position this right along the bottom so that just barely fits into that corner. I'm adding this with my hot glue gun just so that I'm sure it will be very secure. It's time to build the scene now and I have two houses and two groups of trees so the reason why I wanted to have my flowers in place already so that I would know where I could position my first little house. So this is that Concord and Ninth Home for the Holidays set. It is nice when you're building a scene to bring some of the elements to the forefront. I'm doing that by adding these spacers. These are great scrapbook adhesive spacers from Really Reasonable Ribbon. It's much thinner than the regular kind of foam tape. So I can get a little bit of dimension without adding too much. And these stick really well to that glitter paper, so that makes it nice as well. So my first house is going here, and then I wanna bring my second house. I just did the different style in a different color palette. These were very easy to create. The only part that I found challenging was the wreath on the door. They're just really quite little, and so, I struggled with that a little bit, but I was able to get all of the pieces for the house attached with the Tombow. And then those smaller details I added with my two-way glue pen. This is a much smaller application, so I was able to get underneath those layers very easily. So next I wanna bring in my sentiment just to make sure that I'm leaving room for that. This came from one of those new sticker sheets that I got, just a sweet little sentiment here on a strip, and I'm going to overlap the edge. I put a spacer on the side where it hangs over just so that it would be well supported. And that's gonna be my sentiment. So I have two sets of trees. The smaller tree, as I mentioned, I'm going to bring to the background by tucking it under here. Mentioned earlier that I only put the adhesive a little bit lower down so that I would be able to position this behind it. So this helps it to get further back in the background. And then the tree in the front is a little bit larger. I use the detail for the snow cap on that, and this is just going to go right here. So this is filling in that negative space a little bit, but we still have the details of the stitching. So the next one is going on this side, and I'm gonna tuck that smaller tree behind, trying to be careful to keep them upright as a tree would grow straight up. And then here's my second larger tree, I'm bringing that farther down to fill in more of that space. I do have a couple of charms here. This will just barely fit. I picked two snowflakes 
I put them on string. I'm going to add those with my glue gun. And then I'm tapping the cut strings with a vintage button. I wasn't able to leave room on this card for my usual sequins, but I thought it would be nice to bring in a little bit of sparkle. I'll bring some stickles here just to the tips on my blue flower, and that will give me that little bit of extra detail. This will dry pretty quickly, and I'll just add a little sparkle that's lacking when we don't have sequins. So go all the way around and just go on to the very edges. Use this sparingly. And then you can also put some in the windows if you like to have it there as well. So that's it for my card that we created with a scene built from die cuts. I hope this inspires you to reach in to those dies and utilize them and get a lot more use out of them. And you can find links for the products I mentioned if I can find them in the description below, along with links for social media sites. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day, and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.